welcome to everyone in the United States and around the world. This is Love, Truth, and Peace. Your host, Dr. Melody Harris Barrow, coming to you live from Miami. So today's broadcast, this show was created to equip nations and people with the knowledge and tools they need to improve, create, build, prosper, and change their environment so that they can effectively lead to a better future. Today's topic, wonderful topic. Uh, we are going to uh, introduce you in a little bit to Reverend and Mrs. Her and sorry, Henry uh, Samuels. And I just have to say before we start the show that this is a unique interview that I'm about to do. Uh, they're actually from India, but they live in Africa, in South Africa. So here goes my host, Reverend Henry Samuel and his wife. How are you guys doing today? Wow. Thank you so much for having us on the show. Yes. It's yes. really a pleasure. Yes. Thank you, you so much. Welcome. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're like my family now. So uh, we, are going to, we, we are going to sit back and we are going to talk about so many things that's happening uh, in your community. Uh, I know you're getting ready to do a lot of things. Uh, you're already doing things. And in spite yes. of COVID-19, what I really appreciate that you're doing is that the fact that COVID-19 is not stopping both of you for any, any thing. So the topic Absolutely. today is strengthening your community. And that's what you are doing in spite of COVID-19. So let's get started with the show. Reverend, how are you today? Are you good? We are great and great. <laughs> By God's grace. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Tell, tell, me about, tell me about both of you. No, you know what? I'm going to let Sharon speak for herself. You start. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you go ahead. You go ahead. Tell me about you before we start the show. Sharon. Okay. Uh, I must say very upfront, I'm a lady of very few words. <laughs> well, you, have a, you better have a lot of words for me today on the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm, we both are married. We have two kids, two sons. One's 37 and one's 32. Yes. Both are married and we have two grandkids. One's mm -hmm. four and one's five. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the Samuel family together. And we all serve God. Amen. 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 In the same that. church, working in the community, and just doing what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Since you're a woman, a few words. I'll turn it over to uh, Reverend Henry Samuels. Go ahead. Well, people ask us, thank you, uh, Doctor. And people ask us, how do we, you know, we, we Indians in Africa. Yes. Well, let me state up front that we've been born in South Africa. My great grandfather was born in South Africa. And so I'm a few generations here in South Africa. But our forefathers came in from India. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where uh, our, our roots are. Yes. And you can hear we don't speak like Indians, not that it's any good or bad. We just speak South African uh, yes. with a South African accent. Mm -hmm. uh, we serve uh, South Africa is a very diverse country. Mm -hmm. uh, many population groups, as we call it here, uh, religious groups. Um, there's a cross section of people. Yes. Uh, different colors, different races, different um, uh, creeds. Uh, but God has called us in this part of the world. As I said, we've been here, we've been, you know, I don't like to normally bring this up, but um, we've been right in the thick of um, apartheid. 
So we know we've experienced it. Um, I, I don't like to say that we are victims of it. In a way, yes. 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 But we've lived through it. We've lived through it. Yes. So yes. That, that's must have been, that must have been rough. That must have been very difficult. Yeah. I, I smiled. Uh, yes. the, the reason I smiled, one will never understand apartheid if you yes. have not experienced it. Yes. Uh, I can still recall as a um, as a youngster going into a what we call a supermarket here yeah? and having to stand in a separate queue because of your color mm -hmm. and when you go to the gas station it's about you being non-white or black and you get served when we serve you and the the other people can go through right. um, you can't sit on the same bus as other people because yeah. of your color and i said that's the past and I said to you earlier on when we were chatting, I will never let my past and our past yes. stand in the way of our future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I thank God that we are able to forgive and move on. Right. That's what God wants us to do. And that's what's building our nation. You know, mm -hmm. um, and my advice to anyone else, you become your own. You make yourself your own slave. Yes. To whatever circumstance you're in, uh, substance abuse, you make yourself into that. Or you yes. bring yourself under the control of that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we're so involved in our community because, we, you know, we we come from harsh backgrounds. We know what it is to sleep in the same room with six of us, six kids sleeping in the same room. Because yeah. one, we couldn't afford it. Two, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. So um, That was in South Africa, I'm assuming, right? In South Africa? Yeah. Yeah. We've never, you know, my wife's never been to India. I've been to India once. Mm -hmm. uh, I went on a mission trip. What part of India? What part of India? I've been to Mumbai. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was there and three years ago as well. Yes. Very busy place. Well, I went with one of the evangelists. Well, I met him there. Um, he's, a, he's a great apostle in your part of the world. Apostle mm -hmm. Maldonado. Oh, and, okay. uh, yeah. Yes, and I happened to uh, meet him in India, and I got to get there, and wow, we had a great time. That's the only time I've been to India. Mm -hmm. um, it all struck me, if I could use the word, of yeah. the people. I said, Lord, thank you for, you know, where we are. When I see other people's uh, plights, it just it just shook me, yeah. you know. And But having said all that, yeah. God has called everyone into their own little spaces. Yes. And that's how we serve. You know, I was and um, I was a director of a company um, doing my thing in the business world. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the sales and marketing director of a company. Yes. And when God calls you, God calls you. I have a passion for people. Right. When were you called? When were you called? Exactly. Do you remember? I, I'm bad with dates, but I can tell you it's six years ago. God, eight, well, eight, years. eight years ago, eight God years called. Ago. Yeah. but I'm six years full time in the ministry. I've given up my career. This is my calling. Yes. And no, no amount of money will call me back to my exactly. career. Exactly. I, I want to I want to jump in a little bit and say this because um, I've always had um, from I was, uh, I think, 12, 13 years old. I was in church. I was. Um, little talkative so my pastor said um the only way that he was going to keep me quiet while he was preaching was to uh, have me to he gave me my own little sunday school it was ages three years old to ten years old <laughs> so that was the only way that he could keep me quiet in the church so he would put me outside um uh and then i had all these little kids with me and i'm teaching but when I was teaching, I was louder than the pastor, you know, and the pastor still had to punish me because he said, I need the congregation to hear me, not for them to hear you. <laughs> so <laughs> so, wow. anyway, so they put me, uh, I used to go to uh, with my, um, uh, with the other pastor, a new pastor came in, a much younger pastor. And he had me traveling with him through the neighborhood. I, I remember I was 
1415. Um, and um, uh, I knew then, I knew then that I had a mission, but I couldn't put it all together. All I remember all throughout my life is helping people, you know, yes. letting people know who they are, you know, who God is and so forth. So I grew into yes. who I am today. I'm a speaker around the world. And uh, the, the new pastor, the younger pastor that came in, he helped me to find my gift, you know. And uh, I do believe both of you uh, have so much passion for what you're doing because both of you to do this, to leave everything behind and do this, it's a miracle in itself. So I want you to start talking about your purpose. What is your purpose for the people? I mean, coming from South Africa, uh, going through all what you have gone through in South Africa uh, with apartheid, what is it that from that perspective, what are you doing now for the people that the people need what you have to offer? Well, firstly, you know, you cannot sit back and hold a pity party. Yes. Yes, we are. We've been victims of apartheid and then we got to, uh, the government's got to give and give and give. Yes. Um, and I, I, I deserve this because I'm a victim. No. Mm -hmm. God has empowered everyone. Mm -hmm. And God's plan for us is to prosper. God's yes. plan for us is to be empowered. That's why That's he said right. that. And we are very, very, uh, God has called us to empower people. Mm -hmm. And in the process, spread the gospel. That's right. Uh, That's right. You know, I think we're going to go later uh, into uh, greater detail later on. Yes, but yes. spread the good of it. Yeah. Yes, and that's what Mark sixteen fifteen. That's our mission, mm -hmm. is to go you into all the world and preach the gospel. That's yes. what we do. We preach yes. the gospel. There's, and how do we preach it? We show God's love. We tell them this is what God has done for us. This is what God can do for you. You don't have to be in this state. There's a God that can take you out, like He's taken me out. It's taken you out. It's taken us out. Mm -hmm. And we show them that God love. And then they say, wow, we want a part of that. Yes. And then the doors open. Uh, we don't have to preempt anything. We just, God has empowered us to empower his people. Yes. Every soul is a precious soul of God. Yes. Because we make his own image. Um, I have a passion for that. Um, I don't care. And especially for the, for the younger Folk, you yeah. know, uh, people, and uh, and I'm going to say this uh, because it's close to me at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's been close to me for quite some time. When you see a young person coming in, mm -hmm. because they have a few streaks on the, uh, they are in pink and purple, and they got uh, a whole lot of uh, um, earrings on the ears, especially the, uh, you know, the guys, yeah. and then they have the wear the jeans to the bottom of the buttocks, we straight away make judgment. Yeah. And what we tend to do, especially in church, we tend to lead them out literally at the uh, at the door. Yeah. So what happened? They get sucked in and caught by the world. And God dealt with me and said, listen, invite them in. That's it's, right. my job. it's my job to turn them around. It's your job to bring them in. And that's what we've done. We've, uh, we've gone mm -hmm. and call them in said come sit at the table mm -hmm. and then the same would you know um south africa and something that you've probably seen on the news as well mm -hmm. what we call gender-based violence yes uh, woman abuse and yes. we're very involved with that we counsel we we, we run a 24 7 counseling center mm -hmm. and it's an opportunity to share the gospel, but mm -hmm. we've got to, if somebody's being abused or even somebody that's hungry, you can't go and say, listen, let me lay my hands on your tummy and pray and walk away. No, you've got to physically, you've got to meet that physical need. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. 
thank you. And I want to jump in there <laughs> because um, one of the things that I find interesting is the fact that uh, everything is about prayer uh, with most Christians. And what we really need to do is to get up and help our young people, help people, period. You cannot pray over everything. And I'll tell you why. God has given us the tools in order to use. Uh, and I, and I, this came to mind today. I was speaking to someone and this came to mind today. I have seen how the world is pretty much going. The world is, is in chaos, right? Now, it is, it is very interesting how we always say there's two kingdoms. There's God's yes. kingdom and the devil's kingdom. Now, what I see is how faithful, listen to me, my audience, how faithful the negative force is to their masters, to their master, I should say. Very, very powerful thing. You know, they're obedient. They're killing, they're murdering. That's being obedient in that kingdom. Absolutely. They are destroying they are changing the world and Christians are sitting back praying. They are in action. That kingdom is in action where our kingdom, God's kingdom, we are procrastinating. We are praying. We want God to do everything for us. We are saying, God, you will have a buffet in front of you. And then you're asking God permission to go and eat it when God is already giving it to you and it's placed there for you, you are actually saying that God has to do everything for me. That is wrong. God has given us, uh, Reverend, everything we need in order to manage Absolutely. this world. The problem is, is that we are allowing the negative force to control our mind, to control everything about us, and we have become totally weak. So we now have to change the mentality. We have to empower ourselves because when I look at God's kingdom, everybody is sitting back praying. When I look at the other kingdom, everybody is destroying, I mean, killing, yes. and doing what they're supposed to do. Powerful kingdom, but not as powerful as God's kingdom because he's waking Amen. us up now. He's waking us up. You know, and wow. that's, how yeah. Which is that's how I feel. I don't want to preach, but that's how I feel about it. Because I am sick and tired that if I walk in a church and I say that I am hungry, I need a place to stay, and they've been getting money from the congregation for years and years, and you cannot find a place to put this person in. I'm talking about mega churches. Churches that have the funds right now, those churches, since people gave, this is the time to return. This is the time to absolutely. give. Yes, absolutely. Right. And having churches in garages and having churches in parking lots, still collecting, but not participating yes. in the chaos that is happening today. That's how I absolutely. feel about that. Yeah. Wow. We on the literally on the same page yeah. now. You know, when somebody that's living on the street comes into church, we straight away want to put them on a special seat where nobody can go near them. Why, you know, why not get up and hug them? There was a there was a gentleman that came to our church off the street, and he came. He was the first. I'm, I, I, you know, I made an altar call, and he was the first one to come through. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to me, "Go and hug him," and I went through and hugged him. Yes. You know what? He started to weep uncon uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, sir, he said, all I wanted was someone to tell me that they love me. I know God loves me, but I wanted to hear it in yes. life. I wanted to yes. show somebody to show me that. Yes. And, and people came to me, you know, some of, <laughs> some of our leaders came to me and said, um, do you want some, you know, uh, do you want to freshen up? I said, no. I said, I didn't get to smell what he was. Or what was on him i didn't get to see anything else but all and and the lord said to me that night yes. that's how 
I want you to show my love. Demonstrate yeah. it. Love yeah. is like a bell, doctor. Yeah, right. And if you don't ring the bell, you don't know what the sound is. Yes. That's and with it. love, you've got to show it. And that's what we're all about. And, 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 to, and to add, well, you know what, Sharon, do you have anything to add? I, I feel like I'm just taking over the show. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lady no, of yours. No, no, no. It's, it's fine. Whatever, <laughs> whatever Reverend's saying is exactly, I share the same vision. Yeah. And I love, yes. I love serving people. Yes. God's called us to serve. We, and we both serve. Uh, you know, what, you know, she may be quiet in, in the lime, uh, not in the limelight as such. It's one of the first uh, interviews. I've been recently saying, listen, God wants you to come into the forefront. Right, she right. says, just remember the saying, behind every man, successful man, there's a strong woman at the back. There you and go. she keeps reminding me that. And, you know, um, you but go. getting back to what we're saying, that's our passion. Yeah. We want to show God's love. We don't want people to to just be there and getting handouts every week. We want to teach them how to that's fish, right. so they'll have food for the rest of their lives. Right. That's what that's what our ministry is all about. Yeah. It's not it's not about going and collecting millions of dollars somewhere and yeah. building this great Ephesus and mm -hmm. not being relevant to the community. Yes, yes. I that's I want to add to what you were saying earlier. Um, I, 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 um, I realized years ago uh, when I found myself uh, that um, I want to imitate something good. And as I was reading the Bible, I said, well, if they speak so well about Jesus and the things that he did, why not imitate him? So as uh, how I'm living my life is that whatever someone is going through, I put my foot in their shoe. I'm not living outside of their shoe, but in their shoe. And I tell you why, it makes it easier for me to help. Why? Because if you are homeless and if you don't have anything, I put myself in that person's shoe and say, wow, what if that was me? I wow. would want someone to feed me. I would want someone to clothe me. The problem yes. today, the problem is today, we are so comfortable in where we are, but we don't realize that today, especially in this era, you can be homeless at any moment. Because yes, yes. the position that we are in today, people are losing their jobs, things are happening today. And we have to remember that when you pass someone and they're homeless, think about what you can do for that person. I normally go and buy food. Sometimes I don't give cash, I buy food. I will go and get toilet paper, this, this, this to the grocery store and just give it to them. Um, we have to do something because if we continue living the way that we're living, then think about what might happen to us later. So this is the time to start depositing good things in this kingdom and not just only be in the kingdom and say yes, that yes. you are in God's kingdom. Being in God's kingdom, you have to work. This is not a social venture. This is not a social, you're not on vacation because, no. just you, because you think that you have to go to church on a Sunday and make it a traditional than making it a relationship with God, then we have a problem. This is why so many Christians are lost today. You know why? Because they feel that they're not in that building every Sunday. And they're, Absolutely. That they're not connected with God. You should have been connected with God before the church was closed down. Absolutely. Being connected with God is having a relationship with God. Not Absolutely. being a traditional thing where I go to the church, okay, I pay my dues. I feel good now. It's a feel good thing. I don't want to have a feel good thing with God. I want to have a relationship with God. I want to be able to listen to God when he tells me 
Dr. Absolutely. Bob, this is what you have to do. When when Reverend uh, uh, Samuels, uh, when uh, Mr. Boyd introduced me to you, I said, hey, one of the ways that I can help you is you being on the show. So I want you to tell the audience right now the great things that you are doing for your community and the uh, building uh, that you are uh, building, getting ready to build. I want you to talk about that before we go. Go ahead. Wow, it's a bit of a long story, but God is, uh, God gave me the vision. Yes. And, he's in, and I believe he's empowering us right now. Mm -hmm. um, we are, you know, God blessed us with a nice piece of real estate to put up the building. Um, it's everybody wanted this piece of real estate, but God gave it to us. And we at the moment. You didn't have to pay for it. You didn't have no, to we pay didn't. for it. No. Yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. That was the first. That was the first thing that God said to me. That was the first confirmation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we were speaking today, it's about empowerment. And, um, you know, if you look at our governmental uh, or the government hospitals, firstly, I just want to touch on the medical outreaches that we yeah. do. You've seen some of the pictures. And um, it was part of the uh, part of the video that you played earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, we bring, we have medical outreaches. We've got, God has linked us with doctors, professional doctors, uh, dentists, um, you name it, ENT specialists that come and when we do this, do these outreaches, they come and serve their time and we serve, we provide medical treatment to the community free of charge, mm -hmm. including scripts and medication, blood pressure, testing, sugar testing, the lot. And it's amazing because people just can't afford, although they can go to the government hospital and pay a very minimum amount, yeah. uh, the queues and um, it's a, it's a day out of the system and so on. So what we we are doing is to bring it to the community in a more um, a structured way, if I could use that. Yes. We, a part of our uh, facility that we are building is we are we will have a multi-purpose uh, or multi-purposes or where we will have medical um, doctors coming and serving time during the day um, mm -hmm. um, and during that time to that time there's the eye specialist uh, there's the ENT specialist and the community will come in and get the treatment free of charge mm -hmm. and then we 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 find there's a lot of ladies that have great ideas yes and part of the problem with gender-based violence we've been because we've been so involved with this is that Ladies are not empowered. Ladies are dependent and just become housewives. Yes. Ladies just sit so at home. You're talking about that. Keep going. <laughs> Ladies just sit at home and become dependent on their spouses. That's they got right. no sense of belonging. Uh, I must stick in this relationship. I've got four kids or five kids or three kids, whatever it is. My my spouse provides. I got to sit here. I got to take the abuse. Um, but they have great ideas That's and we right. are taking those ideas and saying, listen, come. Uh, and even even when ladies, when they start businesses, and this is not directed, even men too, but yes. Yes. we want to empower ladies to be independent. Yes. Now they may have the great idea, but they don't, they may the lack resources. Yeah. the management skill mm -hmm. to manage the monies, to budget, to target their markets. And God has placed me and God has um, allowed me mm -hmm. to study and get formal qualifications in marketing and sales. Now, yeah. we part of our center is to provide these skills, financial skills, management skills. Yes, you may have a great idea. Let's pick. She may be a great addresser. Yes. But she doesn't know how to run the business. She doesn't know how we to want run to make it, the business. Yes. Yeah. We want to make it sustainable where yes. she'll be in business, not just for this week, but for the next 10 years and right. even more. She'll yeah. empower other other people that work for her. She'll go and set up businesses for them yes. and empower them. Yes. That's what the empower, community empowerment is all about. Mm -hmm. And train them. 
Yeah. They become responsible. And in the process, pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. So we can so that the fiscus also receives from that. Mm -hmm. And they and the government's able to provide more structured learning programs for right. other people. Mm -hmm. But we as the church have been so good and like you said, just pray and walk away. Yeah. This time to pray and walk away is over. It's time to pray and stay. Yes. Yes. Let's yes. and in a way, it all starts from, it starts from, you eat the nail on the head. God doesn't, God is sick and tired of religiousness. In mm. fact, religious people call Jesus. Yeah. On the Sunday, they said, hail, king of the Jews. A few days later, they said, give us Barabbas. They chose a criminal over our Christ. Religious people. Mm -hmm. God wants no more religion out of us. He That's wants right. a relationship. That's and right. when we have that relationship with Jesus, these are the fruit of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you are building. So what I want to talk about now, give me the list of things uh, so our audience would know. Um, you're building a, I, I heard, a medical um, or clinic or something like that. Could clinic, you talk yes. About that? Community yes. clinic. Yes. Then we got a school, skills development program. Yes. That will be housed in that uh, in that facility. Mm -hmm. um, skills empowerment mm -hmm. uh, directed more to the youth and to uh, to the ladies. Right. And then we want to start also an adult uh, basic education to empower the older folk so mm -hmm. that they're able to read and write and so on. Right. And you know, then we have a f our church at this point in time is a very small scale. Um, have a free or a legal a free legal advice desk. That is something that really uh, um, has been uh, people can't afford. Mm -hmm. So we have attorneys and lawyers and so on um, that some of them come to the church. Some of them uh, I've networked with and right. we're able to provide free yeah. legal advice. Good. Well, you know and, what? When God, when you have a relationship with God, uh, uh, you know, you hardly pay for anything. You know, <laughs> I, I, I find that, that that's why I'm sticking with my kingdom. I don't know about anybody else, but um, honestly, for years, I've been traveling and um, haven't paid an echo. I mean, people are always paying for my trips. I know some people might think I'm rich, but I just want you guys to know, no, um, God is sending me all throughout the world. Uh, speaking truth, speaking love, and speaking, Amen. Yes. you know, and I think when uh, you have that relationship with God, uh, he's using you, you are his ambassador, and that's the best job I've ever had, you know, being his Alleluia. ambassador, listening to him, honestly, honestly, uh, reverend, uh, I listen to God, he has directed me, anything that comes into this brain to do, um, I know it's from him and uh, there are procrastinators that would say, you know, um, uh, I'm hearing, but um, I don't, I got to go pray on it. And they pray for years and they still don't do a darn thing. It is time for you that are listening to me, stop procrastinating. It is time for you to get up, religious people, stop worshiping the building and, and, yes. and, and, and the gossiping in the church. Stop doing <laughs> that. When you do all of that, you're not in God's kingdom. God did not call you. God did not birth you in this world to come in this world to do nothing. He brought you here to manage the world. And you have Amen. not been managing the world because the world is in chaos. So now Absolutely. it's time for us to rise, Christians. If you want to call yourself Christians, Muslim, Whatever it may be, as long as you have a relationship with good, with the good, with the truth, I don't care what you want to call yourself. It is time and the time is now. And the Reverend uh, Samuels, he's saying, and I love that the fact that you're working with women, you're working with the youth, uh, you are building something. And you know what? The faith that you have, you might not know where the money is coming yet, but it's coming because Amen. God is always blessing us. And, and you know what? 
it doesn't even have to do with money half of the time because somebody always come and say, I'm going to donate this for you. Donate the services that you need. If you want a building, I have the cement. I have this. I have that. And you'll be surprised how that building is. Look, if it's if, if God put this in your heart, it's going to be done. That's how Amen. I look. It's going Amen. to be done. I when I start a business, I don't think of the money. I think of the 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 the, the, the message that God gave me, and I get started. Yeah. Once I get started, things start coming. People start knocking the door, and I know this by experience. Why? Because I have a relationship with Shit. God. Shit. Amen. Amen. So I want you uh, to let us know how can we contact you? How can we help you? Uh, give us uh, your email, give us your phone number, whatever you want to give us in order to assist you with what you're doing. Well, you can contact. I just sorry, before we, we get there, I just want to yes. give a little thing. Yeah, we, we, also, we also run a 24 seven counseling center. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's um, and uh, I just want to even for the benefit of those watching and will watch later. Yes. When you're faithful and have a relationship with Jesus, he'll take what you consider little and make it much. And as my wife says all the time, when take little, little put in the master's hand becomes much. Amen. We started a daily devotion on on the fourth of July, twenty seventeen. Uh, just a recorded message sending out to. I started with thirty two people. Mm -hmm. Today we have thirty one thousand people in seven different continents all just by word of mouth that's and god it. has built them at 20 and, and the counseling center yes we want to ask that counseling center in in that facility yeah. where people when when a lady gets abused or and when children get abused they need to go somewhere exactly they can't stay there they can't okay. stay there for the night even if yeah. they go uh, they can't they're going to sleep on the street mm -hmm. and that's where we're coming in mm -hmm. well you can get all of us and here's my email address is henry s h e n r y s dot a p m africa praise ministries at gmail.com uh, those of us uh, those of you want to um get all of us via whatsapp sms or just a call mm -hmm. it's plus two seven eight one four one six seven two five seven mm -hmm. or you could call us on plus two seven eight one four three two eight five three two yes yes and you could go and check me out on my facebook page reverend henry samuels we have a youtube channel africa praise ministries and it's all what we do is there something that we do regularly we give a thousand loaves of bread and a thousand liters of milk frequently yes that, that costs money yes god supplies yes and we do that we want to kill the lack the spirit of lack mm. want and poverty yeah how do you kill that you kill it right at the source mm -hmm. if somebody comes to me and says to me can you lend me a thousand or five hundred dollars Mm -hmm. probably do not have five hundred dollars to give but i've done this so many times during our service i will could the lord will lead me to call someone out and i'll bless them and i say listen this i'm giving to you maybe ten dollars or twenty dollars i said you will not ask for another dollar in your life yes and yes. i break the spirit of poverty in your life that's right that's right yeah my wife's always complaining my wallet's never full not because God doesn't give. God gives. I keep entering it. Yes. And the way to receive is to empty. Yes. And and many people want to just take, take, take. You can't take yes. with a full hand. You got to take yes. with an open hand. Right. And but you know something. So I, you, I want to add to what you're saying. And there's so many people um, not managing their money correctly. Yes. And it's easy for someone to spend their money and knock someone's door and ask for money, beg for money. And then when you give them the money. For some reason, they have a hard time paying you back. 
you know, they have a hard time. They pretend they have memory lapse when it's time to pay back. You have to be calling that person, telling them, okay, I need my money. I need my money. And um, I think that uh, I've learned a lesson that instead of me giving money, I'm going to educate you. I'm going to tell you, you need to manage your money. What is it that you're doing that you're working and still have no money? You know, we as uh, people that are doing this type of work, I do believe that um, a lot of times people are mismanaging uh, their life, etc. cetera. And uh, when we see that, what we need to do is to help them and how to manage their life, how to manage Absolutely. their finances versus always giving. Because if you give, they're going to come right back. And these are the teachings that we as uh, 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 have that relationship with God, we have to let them know that, look, I might help you this time, but let me teach you to do what I'm doing. If I can manage my money, so can you, you know. Absolutely. So these are the type of things that um, we need to, to start teaching people that constantly borrowing from others and seem to have a hard time paying people back yes you know we we god gave us a vision and i i always say you give us the, the provision we yeah. we need 1.2 million dollars to start building this i showed you some pictures of the first phase of three hundred fifty thousand dollars. i'm i'm in no ways saying lord this is a bigger big number i'm just saying lord i you are bigger than any number that's right and all the numbers put together and I, I know what God, God uses, he's my sauce, he's mm -hmm. your sauce, mm -hmm. but God uses people as, re, as his resource. Yes, and, but you'll be surprised, I, you'll be surprised, um, Reverend, that what you are doing, you will be surprised that people uh, uh, will donate funds, but also donate uh, services, equipment, and all yes. these things, you know, because I've seen it happen before. So those of you that's listening to the Reverend, uh, there are people that he's helping, people like women, especially women that are suffering today, uh, because when women are being mentally abused and physical, there's physical abuse, they don't have where to go. Uh, so at this center, at least they will be educated they will have uh, uh, a place to go uh, for refuge. And I'm sure that you guys will be able to guide them and, and let them know what they should do, how to do it, and so forth. So those that are listening, it's not always about the funds, but what services that you can provide to help uh, Africa Praise Ministry in order to get things done because we spend so much time criticizing uh, on what we are not doing, but those that wants to do also need your assistance, your help, you know? And uh, I've seen it done where people will come in and give their time and so forth. That's why I was asking you for your phone number and your email uh, because I know that there are people listening now that might be in South Africa, that might be nearby, that say, we can help. Uh, there might be a people out there that saying, we can help. So we are asking you, whatever you can help in, you know, this is the time for us to grow. This is the time for us to rise. And I do believe that this center is going to happen because what you guys are doing is not just dealing with faith you're dealing with faith with action and that's right because faith without works is dead exactly exactly so can i just I give you a little testimony yes sorry i want to give you the last words go ahead is this the last word okay yeah i want to give we, you the last word we are we are yes yeah we're okay. we, mm -hmm. we needed we needed a kind of what we call a minibus, uh, a 16-seater, 15-seater uh, vehicle mm -hmm. to bring in the ones that can't afford or just doesn't have, they don't have the facility to come to church. 
I took a picture of this uh, minibus and I put it on the screens. And for 12 months, we prayed during our prayer meeting intercession. I said, Lord, thank you for it. And the people start to pray and start to believe that, yes, we will get it. 12 months later, we got the minibus, the 16 seater. Wow. Yes. It was close to 500. Um, um, was it? 500,000 rands. Yes. Okay. And then I said, Lord, one week later, a man walked up to me and said, Pastor, don't worry about this. This vehicle is paid for. I paid it. One week later, we got the bus. A week later, it was paid for. And yeah. that, that micro bus goes all over the show, helping people, picking people, taking them to hospitals. We deliver stuff to the to the needy that's yes. faith yes mm -hmm. and i know god god i know the god you and i serve yes i know the god i serve and so does sharon we are serving yes, god. Yes, sure. <laughs> i'm going to speak for you sharon because you're not speaking i'll speak for you mommy <laughs> <laughs> we serve a good god and Amen. i want to thank god today for allowing me to bring you on our show uh there's a lot of work that has to be done uh yes we are going to continue to do this work uh those that uh email me uh, uh give us your email again for those that come out on the show could you give us that email again please it's h-e-n-r-y-s henry's dot a p m at gmail.com do you have a website no, it's under construction. We do. Okay. It's under construction. All right. Very good. Very good. Well, I want to thank my audience for uh, hanging in there with us. I appreciate you guys. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have an awesome show, just as the great show that we had today. Uh, it's going to be uh, women from the Bahamas, uh, from Panama, from Morocco, and from Nigeria this sister it's going to be sisterhood from africa to the diaspora we are going to talk about how we can work together how we can sharon i'm going to have to call you on this one because i'm organizing all these women around the world to see how we can come together and work together and change the world because the world women listen to me yeah. we need to fix this <laughs> no problem i'm in <laughs> i'm glad you're in sharon because i'm going to need you actually um you know since you're from south africa and so forth we're going to need all the women from around the world uh to begin to rise i want you women to rise i want you to believe in yourselves i want you to know who you are because we are powerful beyond measures we are there. We have to start using the tools now that God gave us. That's the idea. Exactly. Using the tools that God gave us. I'm going to show you a small clip of what is coming tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I want to thank you again, Reverend uh, Henry and Sharon Samuels. I love you both. And Sharon, I'm going, to be calling. Not that I'm going to be ignoring you, Henry. I'm going to be calling Sharon first. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> thank you for having us on the show. Oh, God bless. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless both of you. Thank you. Bless. Excellent night.